So Team Liquid's in the spotlight most recently for their highlight victory in Rainbow Six Siege. But they're one of the biggest organizations in esports, with teams and games ranging from League of Legends to Super Smash Brothers. But did you know that Team Liquid didn't even start out as an esports team? Hi, I'm Judy Jetsep with Leaderboard Esports, and this is 107 Facts About Team Liquid. So grab a towel, because we're going to dive right in. Get it? Liquid? Anyway, don't forget to hit the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. <laughs> While these days, Team Liquid players and teams fill arenas to the brim, Team Liquid had its humble beginnings back in 2000 in the grandfather of all esports, StarCraft. Victor Nazgul Gosens, who remains the CEO of Liquid to this day, was a competitive player who wanted to found a clan based just as much on attitude as on talent. It wasn't until 2001 that Nazgul, partnered with Joy Meet Hugevin, released their website, initially under the name of teamliquid.cjb.net. Both Meet and Nazgul were based in the Netherlands, and let me say here that this is my preemptive apology for pronouncing anyone's name wrong, because there's gonna be a lot of them. September 2002 was when Team Liquid launched their official website with a news report of the semi-finals of the Star League Pro StarCraft League. For the record, the match was a 3-2 victory for Reach vs. Yellow. For those of you keeping track, Star League was in Korea, and TeamLiquid.net was based in the Netherlands. Netherlands, Korea, not very close together. This travel had its basis in Nazgul's trip to Korea as one of the first foreigners to compete at the highest level of StarCraft. Quick StarCraft history lesson, any non-Koreans are called foreigners because Korea was, and is, just that good. While Nazgul left Korea after early success to continue school, that Korea trip would have lasting impact. Liquid's connection to Korea was one of the things that set Team Liquid apart from the pack, and it quickly grew into the biggest StarCraft website in the world. It's a good thing they chose the name TeamLiquid.net, because there were some bad options out there too like Liquid.net. Not sure how far they would have made it with that one. This is also where the Team Liquid horse logo came from. Initially, the Team Liquid.net website featured an image of horses running through snow, which was literally chosen for no other reason than snow? Uh, liquid? That banner stayed on the Team Liquid page for years, becoming a defining part of the website. The original artist, Jim Warren, actually reached out to Team Liquid in 2008 to ask for credit, which they immediately gave. In fact, you can still faintly see Warren's original painting in the current banner on TeamLiquid.net, and he's still credited on the site. Eventually, that horse theme was made into the current logo, although there were several failed prototypes before the familiar horse silhouette was settled on. And then, last year, they dramatically changed the logo. See? It's got one less main spike. Actually, Team Liquid has another secret mascot, Elizabeth Esports, or Ellie the Elephant, who showed up on the 404 pages and in the banner asking for people to remove their ad block. Her origin comes from a Team Liquid article called The Elephant in the Room, which purported that the best star StarCraft 2 players weren't actually that good, which, considering what we're about to talk about, is sort of ironic. So, Team Liquid thrived as a news site and a clan for almost eight years, adding over a dozen members to their clan. But over the years, as the website focused on news, many players fell into inactivity, leaving only Elvin Drone Lechness, who today goes by Ariador, and the most recent addition, Tyler Noni Wasileski, as the remaining active players, which makes sense considering StarCraft was 10 years old at this point. But the announcement of StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty changed everything. The team started playing the game extremely early, even hosting tournaments for the game like the Team Liquid Invitational, and this was all while it was still in beta. Those tournaments had a dual purpose, figuring out who Liquid was going to bring on as part of its first professional roster. In a sudden flurry of activity, Liquid added three players in the four months before StarCraft II came out. Team Liquid Invitational second place player Dario Tielo Wunsch, longtime forum member Jonathan Jinro Walsh, and DreamHack winner Hater Heypro Hussein to join Noni on their active player list. For a team that only had about 14 members for 10 years, that's a lot of change at once. And that wasn't the end of it. Continuing on with their trend of being as ready as possible, just hours before StarCraft II was officially released, Liquid secured their first sponsorship from the Little App Factory, making their 10-year transition from Brood War Clan to professional gaming team complete. Man, it's stories like those you tell your kids as they fall asleep so they have dreams to hold on to. That wasn't the only dream coming true, either. In August, Team Liquid went home, as they said in their news post, home to Korea, becoming the first foreign team to base themselves in the mecca of esports.
Through a partnership with Korean organization Old Generations, Liquid made history, living, breathing, and eating Korean StarCraft while based in Incheon. Soon after touching down in Korea, spurred on by the idea of breaking new ground, their roster underwent even more explosive growth, adding Chris Huck Loringer and Yos Rett de Kroon. For those Overwatch League fans, yes, that is the same Huck as the Boston Uprising manager. That just goes to show you how far-reaching Liquid's influence has been. Team Liquid saw less than stellar results for the first two seasons of the Global StarCraft League, or GSL. But come Season 3, something magical happened. Jinro made a miracle run all the way to top four of GSL, becoming the highest placing foreigner ever in the competition. The next few months were up and down for Team Liquid. In foreign tournaments, their practice paid off. MLG Dallas saw four Liquid players in the top eight and Jinro winning the tournament. Nazgul even proved that he still had some fight in him, beating reigning MLG champion and Huck's rival, Idra. And Jinro continued his hot streak, making top four in GSL once again. But the beginning of 2011 was harsh, as Liquid stumbled in Korea and in foreign tournaments. Rhett, TLO, and HeyPro even left the country after failures to qualify for tournaments there, instead founding a joint gaming house in Sweden. Things weren't all bad, though, as Liquid acquired Razer as one of its sponsors, three years after the company had sponsored Liquid's first iteration of their TSL tournament series. It wasn't until July that things started to look up, as Huck became one of the few foreign players to win tournaments that had top Koreans in attendance, even if the tournaments weren't actually in Korea. To this day, Huck is considered one of the greatest foreigners ever. Bet that looked good on his resume for Boston Uprising. But success is hard to keep up in StarCraft. As all members went on a roller coaster of highs and lows, so too did the team. The announcement of the signing of Protoss song hero Hyundok, the organization's first Korean player, was dampened by Huck's departure to Evil Geniuses just a week later. It's possible that signing Hero was actually meant to compete with Evil Geniuses. That Western organization had signed their first Korean, Puma, just two months earlier. What followed was a series of, you guessed it, mixed tournaments for Liquid, where, despite becoming the first Western organization with two Korean players due to the signing of Choi Zenyo Young Min, they continued to struggle. This was despite TLO and Heypro's return to Korea and the signing of a new player, Shep. The only bright spot was a new sponsor on the block, one that had actually just come into existence as an offshoot of streaming company Justin.tv. The new website was called Twitch.tv. Sound familiar? Doubling down on the publicity aspect, Liquid also announced their first documentary, eventually released as Liquid Rising. You can still watch it online today. Heypro was coming off of a great run at MLG Providence, where he became the third player ever to beat Nesty, but would retire less than a year later. A shining light finally arrived in the form of Terran player Yoon Taejin. Youngso, who Nazgul called Liquid's biggest acquisition in history at the time. With the signing of Teja, who was just 17, Liquid became the only foreign team to ever hold three players in Code S, the final round of the Global StarCraft League, a record they still hold today. Teja and Hero proceeded to make quarter and semifinals respectively in GSL, a huge accomplishment for Liquid. Teja quickly showed that his potential was real by proceeding to win three separate foreign tournaments, MLG Summer Arena, the Assembly Summer, and Dream DreamHack Open Valencia, in addition to carrying Liquid all the way to the finals of the IPL Team Arena Challenge 3. He even all killed Team Prime in winner's bracket of that tournament, defeating all five Korean opponents once he was put into the match. Team Liquid's luck had flipped. While their non-Korean players struggled even in foreign tournaments, Teja and Hero were on a streak that saw them reaching semis and quarters of GSL again, marking just the second time since Jinro's decline that Liquid made Code S. One of Liquid's most impressive achievements to date came from Hero and Teja when they met for an all-Liquid finals at DreamHack Open Winter 2012, which the Protoss player won. High off of the success of their Korean players, Team Liquid decided to team up with Evil Geniuses, easily the other best foreign team and their biggest rival. Liquid had been forced to move out of the old generation's house a few months prior due to OG's disbandment. The roster proceeded to move in with EG, forming the joint team EGTL, Evil Geniuses Team Liquid if you didn't catch the drift. This partnership was insane. EG and TL's rivalry spanned from the days of Huck versus Idra to their current rivalry of Hero and Puma. Back at MLG Dallas 2011, Idra had even rage quit out of a game against Huck, leading to the two taunting each other in chat in the final game. So safe to say, a storied rivalry. The goal of this unholy alliance, as Nazgul called it, was a shot at one of the crown jewels of StarCraft. 
Pro League. Pro League was a team format, similar to the IPL TAC3 that Teja had carried, and had a reputation as one of the most prestigious tournaments in the world. EGTL was the first ever foreign team invited since the tournament's inception in 2003. For Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid, it was a chance to prove that foreign teams could hold their own with the rest of the Koreans, even if their best players were Korean… but whatever. EGTL had a respectable first few weeks, and then it all went to hell. What should have been proof that the West could compete ended up being evidence that they were just playing on a different level, and not in a good way. EGTL finished dead last in the league thanks to a horrific mid-season, seemingly ending the discussion of foreign competition for good. The Unholy Alliance had proven to be truly unholy, just not in the way they expected. After that debacle, not a single foreign team has ever competed in Pro League. What's more, StarCraft II was dying thanks to a whole range of problems we're not going to touch with a 10-foot pole. Following Pro League's conclusion, Liquid decided to concentrate on the foreign scene, which, yeah, you know, maybe a good idea. Teja went on to become the most decorated StarCraft II player of all time, with a whopping 11 first-place finishes at Premier Tournaments to his name, although the fact that most of those victories were foreign tournaments tarnishes that accomplishment a bit. Since then, Liquid has stayed very involved in StarCraft II, if focusing their time away from Korea. I mean, would you want to revisit that memory? Teja retired in 2016, and Hero left Liquid the same year before retiring earlier this year. But Liquid still fields five StarCraft II players actively. Uthermal, Mana, Snoot, Bunny, and good old TLO, who's still around. For a guy whose name means the little one, he's sure grown up. He's even the team's assistant manager. These days, Liquid has no Korean players to their name in StarCraft, but Snoot, Mana, and Bunny have been cited as some of the greatest foreigners of all time, so their legacy is intact. So that does it for StarCraft. Come on, we're only on number 55, and we've got a whole lot more to talk about. In the course of becoming one of the largest Western gaming organizations in the world, Team Liquid also expanded big time while still keeping the forums that had been its birthplace alive. Today, Team Liquid incorporates over 100 different staff members, and if you thought that was a lot of data, you ain't seen nothing yet. Liquid also ran the Team Liquid Pro Gaming Database, a database that aims to catalog every single pro game of StarCraft and Heroes of the Storm played ever. On Honestly, though, that's not the greatest way Liquid has expanded. We told you, this isn't just a StarCraft team. Liquid has professional players across 14 games, including Get Ready, StarCraft 2, League of Legends, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, Heroes of the Storm, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Smash 4, Street Fighter, FIFA, PUBG, Quake, Rainbow Six Siege, and Clash Royale. <sighs> That's 53 players in total, not even counting subs or amateurs. Who knows, by the time I finish these facts, maybe it'll be 54. And their sponsor list is crazy long as well, including, oh boy, Alienware, Monster, SAP, Twitch, HyperX, Ballistics, and Need for Seat. That's not even including the biggest investors. Just wait for that. So how'd all that expansion start? Honestly, it wasn't too long ago. In 2012, Team Liquid announced that they would start covering Dota 2 as well as StarCraft. Why Dota 2 over League of Legends, which was already the most popular game in the world? Nasquil said he thought Liquid's existing fans would prefer Dota more. We all know how long that lasted. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Liquid picked up a team consisting largely of the former team Complexity, featuring the players TC, IXMike88, Fluff and Stuff, Bulba, and Korok. The International 2012, the first championship since the game debuted, had just concluded, and so the team had set the goal for qualifying for 2013. They were successful in this goal, establishing themselves as a premier near North American team and receiving an invite to the 2013 edition of the International, where they tied for 7th and 8th after losing to defending champs Invictus Gaming. 2013 proved a rocky year for the Dota 2 squad as they struggled with roster changes and had to fight tooth and nail for a wildcard berth at the International 2014. Even then, they exited tied for 8th after losing to LGD Gaming, the Chinese behemoth they had upset the year previously. Following their disappointing performance, the roster slowly disintegrated, until it was announced in October 2014 that Liquid's Dota team had disbanded. However, Liquid had been busy the last two years. They were never going back to focusing on just one game ever again. 2014 had marked the release of yet another Blizzard game, their first competitive foray since StarCraft II, Hearthstone. Liquid jumped quick, sponsoring Finnish player Jan Savic Mikkonen in August, following a string of impressive placements while he was sponsored on Team Curse. Ooh, foreshadowing. Also among their pickups were Neria and Amaz, with the latter being one of the most popular Hearthstone streamers in the world. What What's more, in March, Liquid had become the first major team to hop on the sudden resurgence of 13-year-old game Super Smash Bros. Melee after the game's appearance at EVO 2013, signing legendary players Ken Huang and Daniel Korean DJ Kung. Both players had been featured in the documentary largely responsible for
for Melee's second life, the Smash Brothers, which Nazgul cited as one of the primary reasons he was picking them up. Ken even used to be called the King of Smash, and that fame had gotten him a place on Survivor Gabon, where he placed fifth. Fun fact, huh? Wait. All of these are supposed to be fun facts. That Smash roster grew pretty quickly, though in 2015, when Liquid made perhaps the biggest change of its history so far, merging with former Team Curse, led by Steve Liquid 112 Arhanset. And yes, that does mean he became Liquid Liquid 112, although these days he just goes by Steve as the co CEO of the Burge Team Liquid along with Nosquel. This meant huge growth for Liquid overall. As mentioned, they added two more players to their Smash roster Hungrybox and Chillin', who had been on Curse, and in Incidentally, were also both heavily featured in the Smash Brothers. Knuckledew, Curse's Street Fighter player, also moved over to Liquid, eventually winning Capcom Cup 2016 under their banner. And of course, it meant that Savitz, despite having already switched, was reunited with his former boss. Remember that foreshadowing? But by far the biggest impact of the merger was the acquisition of Curse's League of Legends team, at the time sporting a roster of Quas, I Will Dominate, Phoenix, Piglet, and Expecial. This also marked the launch of their League of Legends focused website, liquidlegends.net. So much for supporting Dota over LOL. But this means it's time to talk about Curse proper. Because when we talk about Team Curse, the name is more than just a name. So yeah, it isn't just Liquid 107 facts anymore. It's Curse too. See, when Curse first appeared on the League of Legend scene, they had this strange tendency to place fourth every single time. Seriously, fourth at the Season 2 Regional Finals, fourth in the 2013 Spring Playoffs, fourth in Summer, fourth, fourth, fourth. Curse was, well, cursed. So as soon as Liquid and Curse merged, they had some people to prove wrong. Seriously. They even made a video called Breaking the Curse that featured some incredible acting and special effects to make a statement. Give it a look. So, tasked with unshackling themselves from this meme, Liquid proceeded to get fourth again. Even after winning a regular season, their playoff placement of third didn't qualify them for Worlds, meaning that they ended up as the highest placing NA team to not go to Worlds, aka fourth place. Since then, Team Liquid has managed to put together a whopping five different fourth place finishes, even ending the last regular season in fourth place. Over the years, they've played host to a rotating cast of star players, such as former world champion Piglet, NA All Star X Special, and longtime North American hero Doublelift. But until recently, it was never enough to bring them a title. Liquid even made a feature documentary in association with HTC called Team Liquid Breaking Point. And if the title doesn't tip you off, it wasn't exactly the most upbeat story. But it was well received despite showcasing some intra team tension, a result probably owed to Liquid's bold decision to film their players throughout the entire season, which they also adapted into two other series, Rebirth and Squad. So where did Liquid get all that cash for production? In 2016, they were acquired by an investment group called Axiomatic Esports, led by the entrepreneurs Peter Gruber and Ted Leonsis, but with the savvy move of leaving Steve and Victor as co-CEOs. But probably most exciting among those investors for most people was Magic Johnson, or if you're a Warriors fan, Bruce Karsh, who's on their executive board. In 2017, even Disney invested in Axiomatic. Liquid Disney movie win! To really drive the point home, this year Axiomatic announced that they raised $25 million. So that's great, but for the League of Legends team, it only increased the pressure. With all this money, why weren't they succeeding? The community even developed a meme called Paid by Steve, because why else would anyone have a reason to root for this team? But those esports eggs finally hatched into beautiful… chickens? Horses? Something. For the first time ever in their fourth ever NALCS playoffs, Team Liquid won the NA split, fielding a team of veterans who had been searching for glory for years, including Doublelift, Poe Belter, Ole, X Smithy, and former world champion Impact. With that victory, they secured a berth into the midseason invitational, where they were really hoping for a fourth place finish to bring them into the bracket stage, but unfortunately finished fifth, barely missing out. While there, Doublelift put up the performance of a lifetime, boasting the second highest damage share in the entire tournament. So that's the history of the League of Legends team, finally free of their curse but still struggling towards international relevance. But how'd that big esports money impact the other teams on their roster? While the League of Legends team had nightmares of fourth over and over again, Liquid was busy assembling a world-class Dota 2 team, announcing their acquisition of the team formerly known as Five Junks, Kuroki, Fata, Matsumba Man, Jerax, and Mind Control. Funnily enough, this change came almost exactly a year after their 
their old Dota team had disbanded. With this new team, Liquid immediately leapt past the heights they had reached in their previous incarnation, steadily improving until they managed their first Premier Caliber tournament win at Epicenter 2016, defeating the former international champion Snoopy. In addition, they found success at both the Manila Major and the Shanghai Major, placing second at each and guaranteeing their invite into the International 2016, where they pulled off another 7th place tie finish. Downtrodden and facing roster changes, Liquid turned to new addition Miracle, and an old face in Bulba, who became the only player to feature on both incarnations of Team Liquid. But maybe Bulba should have stayed away. After a few disappointing results, the team benched him for GH, and it was here that things clicked. Liquid won their first major in months at Dream League Season 6 and didn't slow down from there. After winning a gauntlet of tournaments, Team Liquid qualified for the International 2017 as one of the favorites, having won their past three lands. This marked veteran player Kuroki's seventh international, making him one of only three players to attend every iteration. But I'm guessing he has an accomplishment he's more proud of. Winning the goddamn international. That made Liquid the victor of the biggest esports prize pool in history, clocking at a sweet $24,687,919. As if they needed more cash. So we know that the sizable injection of money helped out Liquid in League and Dota 2. But how about other games? Honestly, Liquid is living large right now. Their melee player Hungrybox is the number one player in the world, and their Smash 4 player Salem is generally considered to be a contender for the throne now that Smash 4's reigning king Zero has retired. Their Counter-Strike team isn't shabby either. They won ESL's North American Pro League this season, though they've yet to replicate Cloud9's feat of being the first North American team to win a major. Adding to that, their Rainbow Six Siege team, picked up earlier this year, just won the seventh season of Pro League. Vamos lá, Brasil! They even had a Call of Duty team although that particular match only lasted four months. Then this year, they opened up a new training facility in partnership with Alienware that's 10,000 square feet. It even has a personal kitchen staff. Hey, wait, remember how I said that the player count would go up before I was done recording this video? Yeah, they just announced their Fortnite team. Should have seen that one coming. And so that makes their official player count 57. Imagine starting a website with friends in the Netherlands and ending up as an international esports organization that's literally funded by Disney. Team Liquid is one of the greatest success stories in esports, and they serve as a stand-in for the story of esports as a whole, going from just playing some games with your friends to showing up on the biggest stages in the world. Maybe someday we can all hope to be paid by Steve. I'm Judy Jetset, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Team Liquid. Did we miss anything? God, I hope not. If so, leave a comment below. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And if you want more esports, subscribe and stay tuned to Leaderboard Esports.